My name is Devin Brady. I'm uh, one of the founders of Crab Devil. I'm also uh, the, currently acting as uh, CEO and one of the lead designers of the Peninsularium project. So uh, this project that we're talking about today is uh, a project of my own design that we've simply been referring to as the bait ball. So a bait ball, to my understanding, and uh, basically at when fish are, are threatened by pre predators, they kind of ball up and, and circulate to protect themselves. And uh, it's kind of a, a behavior that's done to insulate the, uh, the group as much as possible. So a sphere encasing the most volume with the least amount of surface area is like the most efficient way to do that. So they kind of naturally form this ball and then circulate from the outside to the inside, which kind of rotates their position in the, in the ball and only exposes each fish to the, to the outside and the danger as, as little as possible. This, this project was initially inspired by my wife, Janine Awai. Um, she was the first one to suggest that a, that a bait ball would be a good image for us to explore in the Peninsularium. And she had this idea for, you know, or ideas about how we might go about illustrating the kind of the dynamism of a, of a bait ball. And it got me really interested in it and uh, exploring the, the way that this could, could work. And I started looking at uh, zoetropes, which is an old, you know, uh, 19th century kind of uh, technology for creating an animation, which is basically a, a flip book scene th that is, is mounted on a wheel and you spin it and then you view it through a series of slits and that creates the kind of strobe effect that animates that uh, 2D image. So in this case, what I, what I ended up doing was taking a, a model of a mullet and kind of pushing it through its swimming movement. So I, I started out I started out just watching the movements of fish and, and kind of animating a piece of string. So I, I, looked at, I looked at how the fish moved and saw that it's kind of a, a, a sine wave that propagates from the head to the tail and that wave, the amplitude of that wave increases as it goes from the head to the tail. So I, I kind of played with just lines in, of animation until I had that movement looking correct that I had the, the fish swimming correctly where its head doesn't move a whole lot but its tail moves behind it and it's that that wave that's kind of propagating down the body of the fish. So once I had that kind of figured out, then I applied that 2D uh, image to a 3D model of a, of a mullet, and I basically broke it up into frames where each, each version of the fish is bent just a little bit from the last one. So using 3D printing technology, then I'm able to take those models. In, in this case, there's 13 fish in the animation. So just like you would have cells of an animation, there, there's 13 cells in this animation, and so each of those fish is slightly different. So um, in, in this iteration, there's about 300 fish on this ball, but they're all uh, you know, sequences of that, of that one through 13 animation. So the, the 3D printer is really great at replicating things over and over again, being exact, and that's what, what these have to be, is you know, everything's gotta be an exact replica of the next one because it's flashing in front of your eyes, just like a, a film strip would or, or a, a flip book. <laughs> I first developed the, the fish animation itself and then I developed the structure for the ball. And that structure is, is modeled around really a torus shape. And a torus is kind of a, a form that that is an infinite surface, like a Mobius strip. So as you, as you travel around the surface of this torus, you end up on the outside and go up over the top and down through the center again. And that kind of fits in with our whole cosmology of the Peninsularium, um, using these elements of Fibonacci spirals and infinite surfaces and kind of uh, almost sacred geometry kind of things that as I explored them, I realized that we were, we were kind of talking about this stuff thematically, but the more I got into it, the more I realized that that's actually the, the kind of mathematics that you need to drive a construction like this. So everything ends up being based off of Fibonacci numbers and prime numbers. So you, there's 13 fish in the animation, there's 41 ribs on the ball. Every, at, at every instance, there's, uh, these numbers are either prime numbers or, or Fibonacci numbers, and, and, and the angles are Fibonacci angles. And the reasons for that is that that allows you to create a repeating pattern that never falls on top of itself. 
the, the nature drives the geometry, the nature drives the mathematics, and the reason why the math is what it is is just because that's the only way it could possibly be. Just like I was saying about the fish, the, in, an, in an artichoke or in a sunflower or in any other natural form, a pine cone that exhibits a Fibonacci spiral, the reason for that is because at, I think it's 137 and a half degrees, that Fibonacci angle, when you, when you keep dividing a circle at 137 and a half degrees, you'll see that the spokes of that, of your divisions never fall on top of another spoke. And so it's just the most efficient way to fit the most pedals into one space without one interfering with the next. And it's just the way that it works out. So the, the fish on the bay ball are, are mullet and, uh, and mullet as a, as a symbol of, of Florida and the kind of ecology of Florida and, and even more so maybe the, the, the unrecognized or uncelebrated elements of Florida and its ecology, I think the mullet is kind of a perfect symbol because it's a, you know, in terms of uh, fish that you eat, it's, it's always been kind of looked down upon, but the people of Florida have been eating mullet since forever. We've been smoking mullet since forever. And, and it's, it's been a large part of the fishing industry in Florida going back, you know, uh, generations. One of the images that, that always sticks in my mind was, um, I, I believe I read it in the, uh, the Cabeza de Vaca account of the Narvaez expedition, which was one of the, the first uh, groups of conquistadors to land on the shores of Florida. And they, they sailed into Hillsborough Bay. And when they sailed into Hillsborough Bay, they, the, the mullet were so thick in Hillsborough Bay that it was actually slowing their boats down, that there was like the, the friction of the fish in the water. There were so many fish in the water that they couldn't make good headway in their, in their sailboats. It was that thick with mullet. And the, uh, you know, the, the indigenous people of Florida at the time had, you know, in, in some ways, obviously, you know, it, they, were, they were probably being eaten alive by mosquitoes too, but in other ways, this is one of the very few uh, societies, really advanced societies, that, that rose up outside of agriculture because they didn't need agriculture. They, they had this bounty on the shores that could feed them and their offspring, and, and, uh, and it was all based around this, this bountiful uh, gulf or, or, or bay that they were living on. And uh, this year we've been invited by the folks at Gasparilla Festival of the Arts to show one of the environments from the Peninsularium. So we chose this uh, one because it was ready and we've been working on it, but two um, because it's kind of really at the heart of the Peninsularium and, and in the final installation, it will really be at the heart of the Peninsularium as you navigate your way through the space. This will be kind of one of the, the central points of the whole installation. But uh, the, the design for the Peninsularium and the concept behind it has always been to uh, outfit these ship, these 40 foot shipping containers as immersive art installations. And part of the thinking there was that we could build these environments out and have them be sort of modular and plug and play. We could pick them up and take them somewhere, drop them off, be able to show them, you know, at a, something like Gasparilla Festival of the Arts and then take it back to, to our place and install it into a permanent installation. So this is kind of our, our plan for doing these large, complicated installations in remote locations or in places that don't normally see this kind of thing. And then also uh, for our own purposes at the Peninsularium, we can, we can plug these things in, we can change them out. We can also have artists in other locations working, building out containers and shipping them to us, or at least working within the confines of this 40 foot uh, shipping container, which is kind of a defined module that's internationally known. So all of those dimensions are, are easily discoverable. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You might need to shut it down. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, there's, I think that bearing up top is out of alignment a little bit, but that noise that it made here is concerning.